Good morning. I don't know if we can say we really need the rain anymore, do we? We're glad to have the rain, though. Today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and our gospel lesson today is the healing by Jesus of a young girl and of an older woman. So we see again the teachings of Jesus and his wonderful reaching out to touch others. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. 
drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Lamentations. The Book of Lamentations is one of our most important sources of information about the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in 587 BCE. Though the people admit that God's judgment was just, today's reading declares a fervent trust that God will not leave them forever. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. 
It is good for one to bear the yoke in truth, in, in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put up one's mouth to the dust, there may be yet hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Word of God, word of life. Amen. Join me responsively in Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and will not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks and holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks and praise. The second reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul encourages the Corinthians to honor their commitment to participate in the collection his churches are organizing for the Christians in Jerusalem. He presents Jesus as an example of selfless stewardship and reminds them that Christians have received abundantly so that they can share abundantly. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving you my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jairus, a respected leader, 
begs Jesus to heal his daughter. A woman with a hemorrhage was considered ritually unclean and treated as an outcast. Both Jairus and the unnamed woman come to Jesus in faith, believing in his power to heal and bring life out of death. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw him fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a young woman, there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt it in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you, and how can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble this teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. I serve on the board for LGBTQ Outreach of Porter County. This is an organization that provides an affirming community for LGBTQ youth and adults through empowerment, advocacy, opportunity, and support, such as youth meetings, educational partnerships, and community events. It's a relatively new organization, and I only recently joined them in January of this year. They had been active for about a year when the pandemic struck, and so they were not meeting. In May of this year, the youth meetings opened back up, and there had not been much response, and we learned that advertising on Facebook was for old people, so we had been struggling a bit with getting the word out. As more things began to open up, we decided to hold our recent June member meeting outside in the park at Central Park Plaza in Valparaiso. As I headed east on Route 30, I wondered how many people would show up. I readied myself for the five board members and maybe as many organization members. I was hopeful and I prayed for a decent turnout and a nice evening anyway. I found the small group of eight or so people and we sat in a circle on the grass and it was a beautiful day. We had a sign with the name of the organization propped up against a chair. A few people passed by and asked what was going on and asked if they could stay and we widened the circle. And this kept happening. Others would walk by and ask, what's going on? And we would explain and invite them to join us. And we widened the circle. It didn't take long for the group of eight that I had found to turn into a group of 35. In fact, one of our board members was coming from work and arrived late and could not find us because he was not looking for such a big group. We didn't even really have an agenda. We introduced ourselves, sharing where we were from and what brought us there. 
Over half of them just happened to be walking by. Everyone there was grateful to have a place to be themselves. 35 new friends found each other when we all just showed up in hope and offered a welcoming space for each other. It turned into an evening of conversation with one another. The board received great feedback and we have lots of new ideas for engagement now and we are ready to move forward. Where do we show up in hope? Most often, we show up in hope when we, or someone we love, need healing. We hear all about hope and healing in today's lessons. This morning's readings from Lamentation tells us, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the souls that seek him. This and Psalm 30 that we read together affirm that God's truest intentions for humankind do not include suffering and death. In his commentary on today's gospel message, Dr. Fred Needner, who is senior research professor in theology at Valparaiso University, writes this. Here Jesus meets two victims of unclean forces among the begging crowd. A wealthy, well-positioned official, more importantly, a father living every parent's nightmare, trustingly begs for Jesus' intervention. Jesus goes, but a desperate woman whose womb hasn't quit bleeding for a dozen years and who has exhausted everything on healers, interrupts them. She trusts and touches Jesus' clothes, her only hope. He does not become unclean, she becomes clean, and not merely healed, but whole, saved, thanks to her trust. Jesus calls her daughter, she is family. Jesus says to her, your faith has made you well, go in peace. Then Jesus touches the 12-year-old's unclean corpse. He calls her from the sleep of death to life of resurrection and restores her family. Jesus says, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and walked around. At this, they were overcome with amazement. Curiously, the interruption in the story reveals a pattern that Jesus teaches and that God loves. The poor woman, one of the last, receives wholeness first, while the first, Jairus' wealthy family, receives theirs last. But in the end, God has mercy on all. What do we make of the fact that sometimes healing comes quickly, and other times it is years in the making, or never comes? I came across this short prayer the other day. Lord, please prepare me for what I am praying for. What do we do with our healing? How do we go forward? And do we go in peace? And how, in a spirit of loving community, do we help others heal? While going about our business, if we are encountered by another seeking help, would we stop for someone in need or continue on our way, too busy to deal with an interruption? Where do we begin? We pray. We pray that God gives us the strength that loving our neighbor requires, and that the Holy Spirit guide us into all truth, freeing us from fear to learn from each other, and giving us grace to be different together. And then we show up in hope, so that we may go forward in peace, with love for all humankind, for all of God's family. Amen.
confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. morning in our prayers, Velma Fields' uh, niece, Barbara Hardin, has been diagnosed with cancer. Sandra Rubin's brother, Bob Fentress, thanks all of you for your healing prayers. He's doing better and is grateful for all the GLC love. We also keep Sandra in our prayers as she seeks out treatments for her health issues. And we remember the victims and families of the building collapse in Miami. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of hope, the ministry of your church extends across borders, from nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Accompany all those who labor eagerly in service of the gospel, that through your good news all might experience transformation. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the land that provides our food. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate and empower us to protect all you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that none among us would have too much or too little. Lord, in your mercy, God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering from physical or mental illness. Embrace those who are sick, especially COVID long haulers, and especially those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this assembly and all those gathered together in worship, here and at home. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith, that we might experience resurrection in this community. Lord, in your mercy. Please join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, Help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities to love and service. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us towards you. Envelop them in your love that we may be re united with one another in the last days. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us be what we receive here, 
your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks for grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table, and with more than enough for all. Come.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Well, happy anniversary, Denny and Sherry. Please look in the bulletin, especially in the back, with the announcements. We have Sunday school today. Uh, Denny is continuing the book, um, God is Closer Than You Think. And today they're going to be talking about how does God, uh, how do we know, how do we know when God is talking to us. That will be a very, very good lesson to, to, be, to be in. Thank you all for the candy that you've brought in. There's going to be several of us uh, at the parade. And so thank you. If, if you want to bring in some more, we can always use it. So, so thank you. That will be the July 3rd. We will be in the parade. Uh, there'll be uh, Terry and Pam will be in his <laughs> slingshot. I, I tell her I keep wanting to say Spitfire, but sorry. <laughs> And uh, we will be in Mark's, I, uh, Carrie and I will be in Mark's um, pickup, plus Leanne will be in the back. Riding backwards, I could not be with her, or we would have a mess. There will be sign-up sheets, uh, by the way, out in the narthex or in the hall for uh, servers and for uh, the homeless shelter the service for the homeless shelter, so please uh, look at that. We do need them. We have, uh, when they, as I said before, they didn't ask us to come because of the COVID, but now they want us to come and serve, so if you're willing, uh, there are, there's a sign-up sheet for that. Please stand. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>